Um, so I think the most important type of melanoma for head and neck pathologists to know about is lentigo maligna. And that's because it, it, the most common place for it is on the head and neck of elderly sun damaged people, usually Caucasians. And what you're going to see is single cells or sometimes nests of atypical melanocytes kind of scattered and trickling along in the sun damaged skin with an atrophic epidermis. Um, this is a very florid example. Some examples are much more subtle and show only single cells with no nests, and those can be extremely challenging to diagnose. Um, they tend to kind of have areas where they will grow more densely, and then they'll skip, and then you'll find another area further away that has some more. And so skippy, skipping patchy growth along a broad zone of epidermis of single melanocytes in a sun-damaged face uh, of an older patient, that really worries me for melanoma, okay? And also you often have lymphocytes kind of attacking the tumor. This is a host response, and that can be a really helpful clue as well. And here you can see nice confluent growth, and these melanocytes are evacuated, but sometimes it's more subtle than this. Now, one thing that happens in some melanomas, particularly I feel like I see it in lentigo maligna, is you get regression underneath the melanoma. And whether this means the tumor actually invaded or whether this is a re relationship to the host response is not fully clear. But the point of why I'm bringing it up is if you see a zone of pink that's pushing down solar elastosis, that means that this pink collagen is new. It got there after the person became old and sun damaged. It was not their normal collagen that they were born with. So you have to think, why is that collagen there? Is it there because they had trauma or a previous biopsy and now we have scar? Is it there because there's a desmoplastic melanoma depositing collagen or some other tumor? Or is it there because there's regression? And in that case, in this case, you can see a little bit of unzipping right here. So it's evidence of confluent growth, large nests of atypical melanocytes here, and regression-like changes in new collagen pushing down the elastosis. That's melanoma until proven otherwise. That's a really good clue. It only works in old sun damaged skin. If you don't have a bunch of elastosis, this trick doesn't work, but it's a really helpful trick um, in older sun damaged patients. And so regression is usually a mixture of disorganized pink collagen and um, um, lymphocytes scattered in here, and then melanin filled histiocytes, or what we call melanophages, in varying proportion scattered in the dermis. And up here, you can see the confluent growth of atypical melanocytes representing the in situ lentigo maligna melanoma in situ up above. So I would report this if I didn't find anything in the dermis, I would call this melanoma in situ lentigo maligna type with abundant dermal regression. So basically when I see a lot of regression, that means there could be invasion that has gone away or that we've not sampled and they should think, that, think about that and keep it in mind. Some people um, have advocated for measuring the depth of regression. I personally do not like that idea or do it, but I have met other people who do, um, but I don't do it in my practice. So you can, you can take that or leave that. All right, now the other thing I want to point out is that lentigo maligna type of melanoma can sometimes mimic the pattern of dysplastic nevus. So I'll show you a dysplastic nevus in a minute, but this is a melanoma, but it has elongated reedy with bridging of nests across the tips of the reedy. And so I have seen multiple examples of these kind of melanoma that had been seen on the face of an old sun damaged person and called dysplastic nevus with moderate atypia or severe atypia. And then of course, a year or two later when it continued to grow or recurred or when the full excision was done, it was full blown obvious melanoma. So I wanna alert you of that, particularly in older sun damaged skin, the lentigo maligna type of melanoma has this tendency sometimes to grow with a pattern that looks predominantly nested and has bridging across reedy and otherwise resembles dysplastic nevus. Be very, very, very cautious. I basically, I, all, I am only, I almost never, let me just put it this way, I am extremely hesitant to make a diagnosis of dysplastic nevus on the sun damaged face or scalp of an older person, okay? I have done it before, but only with multiple stains and deeper sections and a comment that despite the age and the sun damage, I think that the stains and everything point to dysplastic nevus, but I'm really, if this is part of a bigger lesion, it may not be right, et cetera, et cetera. So I do it with a lot of hedging and trepidation. Um, I do see sometimes dysplastic nevi on the sun damaged skin of the shoulder or the arms of older people. And even then I'm still cautious, but on the face, it's extremely unusual. Even in younger people who have a lot of dysplastic nevi, I don't tend to see very many dysplastic nevi on the skin of the face. So if they're old and sun damaged and it's the face, I would strongly recommend that you not call something dysplastic nevus. And if you have any doubts, send that for a consult to someone, because uh, if you call it dysplastic nevus, you'll usually be wrong. And I've seen many examples of that. 
So here's that same lesion, and look elsewhere in the lesion, you can see confluent growth of atypical melanocytes all the way down this eccrine duct, which is a very characteristic feature of um, melanoma. It's basically a type of confluent growth. So here's an example of a real dysplastic nevus, just to give you the idea if you haven't seen one before. They have melanocytes down the tips of elongated reedy with this bridging. So that's a true dysplastic nevus, which again, I don't see often on the skin of the face. But just to give you an idea, they really can, uh, melanoma and sites you really can uh, look similar to that pattern. So it's the sun damaged face skin is the, the clue that probably you're not dealing with a true dysplastic nevus, you're dealing with a melanoma in disguise.